So here we are again, folks, as usual. 1970 Toyota pickup, 20R engine. A few things have happened since the last video, which I'll detail, including that GM ignition module, which does work. I'll give you details on that in another video. But uh, we found out that the ignition, excuse me, yeah, ignition, ignition advance inside the distributor wasn't working. The mechanical advance was sticky, could not get it freed up with lubrication. The vacuum advance was totally stuck and would not come loose. It was just wore out. So we got a new distributor on here. Only one small problem. Let me show you this. You see the adjustment slot here? It's all the way up against the bolt on that slot. Now rotating this distributor back this way retards the timing and I'm only able to get it down to 8 degrees so that at number 8 mark there and no further which is the timing for this motor it should be 8 degrees before top dead center no problem you say but quite frankly I've been doing a lot of reading a lot of research as usual and the information I had on installing this distributor was not correct. And I wanted to put this out there because this is a this is actually a big problem. You can talk about talk to anybody, look at forums. Oh, just bring the engine to top dead center. Just line the mark up with zero and put the rotor in in such and such position. So when you put it in, it rotates to the number one spark plug. But the problem is. Your base timing isn't there. The engine is timed at zero, at top dead center when you do that. Most V8s run at 8, 10, 12 degrees before top dead center. This one runs at 8. To confuse the issue more, the 22R, next generation, is actually timed at top dead center. But then the 22RE comes in and it's actually timed at 5 degrees before top dead center. Now, it's only a few degrees you're saying, what's the big deal? It can't be a big deal because it can actually throw your dis distributor drive gear one tooth off, which is what leads to problems like this non-adjustment here. You could also swap your wire tower here, especially on V8s. On a four, it can be a little more critical. And the big deal about this is, is you know, you want your engine to be as close to the base time as it's supposed to have when you first start it, so it fires right up. You don't want to have excessive cranking on that first shot. So, best thing to do is find the top dead center, pointing at number one, or bring it around top dead center to come the compression stroke. There's ways to find this out. You take out the first spark plug, you put a finger over it, it'll blow air at you. You can also take the valve cover off and find the rocker arms for the first cylinder. And when that's a top dead center on the compression stroke, both of these rocker arms will be tight. I think. No, excuse me. They'll be loose. Right, they'll be loose. Sorry, I have to think about that for a second. There's a lot of information here they will be loose so you can verify it that way sometimes you can take the cap off and look and find out but if this is off it's easier you can do the finger test it's no big deal and this is the way most people describe it and write it up and how they do it but what i'm going to do is take it past top dead center and then bring it back to that eight degree mark and then install the distributor so that way when it lines up and this goes over to number one it's going to be dead on nuts timing not eight degrees retarded that will help with the start and with initial timing and with it to run on first shot so now get on this i'm going to show you what's up here hang on Okay, so we're going to give this a go. First, we get the clips off. 
Take the cap off. Don't take the wires off. You don't need to. Okay, so there you go. There's your rotor. As you can see right now, it's between this one and this one. It needs to be over here. That's number one. So, 19 millimeter wrench. Go down to the pulley bolt and rotate the engine clockwise. It's to your right. Let's make sure it's out of gear first. Makes it a lot easier. Also, if you take the spark plugs out, it makes it a lot easier. You can do it. You can see that rotor turning. Just gonna bring it around. Now, right there, when it was pointing over here, opposite number one, that would be the exhaust side for number one. If you look at the geometry, it'll make sense. coming get around yes you could do this by bumping the starter but I do it by hand because it's a little more precise let me show you I'll get you down in here see that little blue mark it's coming around so I'm gonna hold you over here and keep turning so you can see it hopefully you can see it there she comes. Now that went past zero, so we'll put it right at zero. Okay, that's top dead center for number one. And as you can see, that's pointing right in that direction. And there's number one. You can tell because, see, there's the wire going there. Boom, no problem. Now, pull the distributor out. Twelve millimeter bolt here. <clears throat> Loosen that up. We'll take her out and get it out of the way. Go ahead and unclip this so I have some room to move and I don't pull my wires to shreds. Now, you should be able to pull this distributor straight out and this should rotate up. The distributor is a little tight. I had a heck of a time getting it in here. There we go. See the, see the rotor starting to move? There we go. Now, the reason that thing moves, see that gear? It's not straight cut, it's helical. So when you put it in, it actually turns it to the side. So we'll leave that hang there for a second. I'm gonna go back to the pulley. And we'll take us down to eight degrees. Get past it, come back. Right to there. I'll show you that. See how the mark is on the number eight? That's what you want. Now, here's the trick with these. This works with 20R, 22R, etc. I actually have a field service manual from 77. With the rotor on here, you point it right at this spring clip tab. It's about 11 o'clock position. Keep it straight. And put it right back in. There we go. Oh, she's tight. It's a reconditioned brand, brand new distributor from Cardone. 
they at least we finished all this stuff so it's a little tough come on baby take the rotor off of here well leave it on leave it on just in case but it's tight here we go now watch it starts to slide in I see a thing turning boom turned right down into that number one position other thing you look before earlier in the video you see this vacuum advance see how it's nice and flat now parallel to the ground before it was canned up on an angle like this that tells you it's not right every underhood shot I've seen of a 20R has that thing pointed flat to the ground make sure the vacuum's hooked back up just for the fun of it there we go and now you can see pretty much dead on time you can fiddle with this back and forth a little bit but as you, see, as you can see even putting it so that's totally flat puts that bolt right in the center now so now you've got adjustability to retard or advance which is the way it's supposed to be now put a nut back in after we put our wire back up just like that find the hole get her in there now you just normally you just snug this up you don't want to crank it down uh, torque rating for this is like nine or ten foot pounds it's not not a lot run it until it gets firm and then just give it a little nudge and it stays put you want to loosen up a little bit when you're doing your timing later but see how that went from there to there and again you look at the cap boom it's right on it no problems put your cap back on clip back on clip underneath back on Make sure it's on there, good to go. Now, I am waiting for an ignition switch, otherwise I would start this right now and show you that it runs better and starts better. I will do that next time when I get the ignition switch in. It's the last piece of the ignition on this thing. But basically that's it. Again, the right way to do this, and I've been, I saw this with a lot of old hot rodders who've been doing this for 30, 40 years, sometimes even 50 years, set your initial timing do not set it to top to zero unless that is that particular motor's timing the 22r is set at top to zero that's the base spec chevy small block 350 all small blocks appear to be 12 degrees forward 8 to 10 something like that usually 10 but if you do this set the timing set it like i showed you you push it straight in it rotates right to the number one that's the important part it's on the fire when that is where it's supposed to be why put it at top dead center and start it and have it run retarded for five ten minutes whatever until it warms up and then adjust it it's just a waste oh yeah and one old timer says well, everybody still thinks this because flatheads were always near top dead center. Well, you just had to flat, you know, top dead center and just stick it in there and it'll just be fine. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, flatheads are a low compression motor. That's why they don't have all that much timing advance. Higher compressor, compression needs more timing advance, I'm told. It makes sense to me when you think about it. But that's it. I mean, that's really all there is to it. See that nice and flat in there. I just want to post this up to show you what the deal was. Remember, rotor at this, push it in, boom, rotates over to there. Nice and simple. 
I'll have more later. Thanks for watching. Hope it helped.